B. John Robinson going number eight overall of the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously an athletic freak. Probably the most hype for a running back we've seen since Adrian Peterson when he was a prospect. So, Ray, we'll start with you. Then we'll go to Mike and then Ian. Um, was it too early at number eight? You don't want to take a running back that early? Or is he the, is he worth it, number eight? It's funny. All 22, we partner with PFF. And the whole thing is like, hey, you know, running back value is not there in the top ten, right? And so, uh uh, you're kind of asking me a bit to go against that here, but I think if you were to simply stack them, and I didn't really do like a one to 50 big board this year. Like I normally do. Bijan Robinson is probably in the top five or six players in the entire draft, if not even higher, just regardless of position. I think once the quarterbacks were gone from a place like Atlanta and just that offense, they, they have a great, you know, run blocking line. They have some weapons on the outside, they just wanted to stamp their identity and get what was probably the best player still on their board. I totally see why and understand it because Bijan is phenomenal. His, his feel for the game is, is incredible. Uh, I would push back a little bit and say still to me, I think Saquon is the top prospect since Peterson at that position, but I see why I think that that run run offense is going to give opposing teams a lot of problems this coming year even though they do have you know uncertainty at the quarterback position i think that's still to be resolved so you're probably still looking two steps ahead as to what that franchise is going to be in a couple years but if he's the best guy on your board then by all means take him and you know yeah he's a running back but so be it he's he's the best player on the board if you can't trade out take him that's that's your identity so uh, for Bijan, I love the fit. Like I said, he's got a great line in front of him for that. They're built to run the ball. Uh, you saw Algier have great success last year, and Bijan is just on another level talent-wise. So I'm excited for him. I mean, if we're talking fantasy. He's obviously way up there now in, in redraft and dynasty. So uh, I think it's a good fit for Bijan overall. And then for the Falcons, you still have another year or two to sort of get the rest of the pieces in there to uh, really become a contender moving forward. Ian, how about your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think anytime you draft a running back that early, there's going to be a little apprehension, right? And especially after getting a thousand yard rusher from Tyler Algier the year prior, right? You know, they proved that they could get production from lesser running backs in that scheme for sure. So, you know, it wasn't a need, right? But at the same time, Bijan was the top three prospect, regardless of positional value on my board, right? So I think you look at what he possesses, 5'11", 215, you know, really good size, workhorse. He's got physicality, contact balance. But then, you know, for his size, the creative instincts, the vision, the processing ability in tight spaces, the short area agility, flexibility on his cuts, you know, all of those things are very, very good for, for his size. So, you know, and on top of that, too, a phenomenal receiving back as well. You know, he's shown he can pass protect. So, you know, I think the versatility, the dynamic athleticism in tight spaces, the ability to control runs, you know, and kind of manipulate defensive backs and then finish with physicality, all that is there with him. So, you know, I'm in agreement with Ray. You know, I'm very excited to see him in that offense, especially after adding Matthew Bergeron in round two, you know, put him at guard. I think that's a very, very solid front for you. Uh, so I think he can, he can provide dividends on that. I think, you know, for the Falcons, especially, you know, they made some nice moves in free agency, getting Jesse Bates, Calais Campbell. You know, they made enough moves where I think that this is warranted, right? You know, taking the best player available and just going from there. If Tyree Wilson was still there, you know, if the Raiders hadn't taken him, I think maybe they would have considered that, right? Because I think he fits well in that scheme as that stand-up rusher who can move around the front as well. But he wasn't, and Bijan was the best guy. And, you know, I think you know, it's tough because people say running backs don't matter. But, you know, he is as close to an elite running back prospect as we've seen. So you put him on that offense, you know, especially with Desmond Ritter. You want a guy who can kind of take on added volume, who can provide that versatility and provide dynamic ability on all three downs. Bijan does that. So I'm not going to criticize it too much, right? It's kind of one of those things like, you know, prove it. You, you made a move that I didn't completely agree with, but I can see the reasoning for it. Now prove it. Show me that you can put him in a position to succeed, and we'll go from there. As everybody knows, we are talking to a draft panel of uh, three guys, uh, co-founder of All-22 Fantasy Football, Ray Cotto, Pro Football Network NFL Draft Analyst, Ian Cummings, and co-creator of NFL Rough Draft, Mike Lusheen. You know, it's so funny. We, we talk about the draft, and you're wondering what, what these guys are going to turn out to be as this season progressively starts. You look at some of these picks, and you just mentioned – uh, uh, Bijan Robinson, you talk about obviously Gibbs running backs, and this is not a wide receiving class. And, and I think that was a lot of the reason why you've seen running backs get drafted early in this draft, because these are the best playmakers in the draft. They're, this didn't have the depth like it, it did last year when it came to wide receivers, and even the year before with depth of wide receivers. 